God for everyone on today. We are here on our noble platform of King's Lands Ministries, along with Freedom Street Ministries as well. We give God glory for all that He's doing. We thank Him in the midst of every situation. And today we're going to go in to find out what are some of the giants in your life? Are you your own giant? Are you stopping yourself from achieving the best of the things that you want to accomplish in your life? How about stubbornness? Is stubbornness your own giant? Is pride your giant? Is addiction your giant? Is gambling, shopping, overeating? What is the giant in our life? Disobedience, disrespect, dishonor. What is the giant that is keeping you away from God? Keeping you away from the church? What is your giant? Can you please fix the camera, camera lady? Because I'm in the corner over here. So I need you to kind of center me. So it's very important for you to understand what your giant is. And with that being said, Mother, can you open us up with prayer um, to uh, to start our service on this afternoon? Uh, just pray for everyone to be attentive and to listen to the Word of God. For the Word of God to touch people to make a change in their everyday life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this Sunday afternoon, we ask that we become focused. Yes, Lord. putting you first. Yes, throughout the entire service and day, that we understand exactly who you are. Yes, Lord. That we are not to put any foolishness before you. That we understand that there are days that you let us have fun, but today is not that day. Today is our focus point. We are to make sure that we're prayer with you, that we commune with you, and that we understand everything that is being taught before us this day. May we be strengthened and encouraged, no matter what the situation may be, because you are always there. All we have to do is call out your name. Yes. What is that name? Jesus. Yes, the name of Jesus. Thank Where you. every knee shall bow. Yes. And every tongue will confess. Yes. This prayer I bring to you, Father, in thy son Jesus' name, the of my life and our lives, the personal Savior. Amen. 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 We're going to start today with 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to go to the GW, which is God's Word. GW, which is God's Word. Mug, you are to share the Bible app with Fat Daddy. We're going to start with 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm going to read the 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, 1 through verse 11. And then I'll let uh, Pastor, you take over on the next, um, on the next ones. We're going to learn today the importance of of understanding what your giant is. Many of us have giants in our lives, but we really don't know what they are. 1 Samuel chapter 17, starting at the first verse, starting at verse 1. GW, God's Word. Translation, GW. If you got your Bible, just go to your Bible. Wherever your Bible is, go to it. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Excuse my seat. I have been doing so much. Chapter one. Oh God. Oh God. I did not know I how much it took. 1 Samuel 1. And I didn't know what how uh, strong Samuel God made me. What chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I've been doing a whole lot of stuff, y'all. You are allowed. And let me tell you all something. You have to stay focused on what God says about your life during this time. Mm -hmm. You have to be focused and know 
that everything is working together for your good. Yeah. You have to know that God is with you during this time. Because if you don't, you, you will fall. There's many tasks that I am doing alone. And the devil always tells me, you're not loved. You're not cared about. Nobody cares for you. Your children are nowhere around. They ran off away from you. They, But God, the Bible says, when God is with you, who or what can be against you? So this is what you have to stay focused on because many people crack under pressure. And pressure busts the pipe. So it's many things that... Um, However, I, I didn't know how much I had to do all on my own. I thank God for the support that I've had, but many tasks I have had to do by myself. I got a task right now that I don't even know if I'm going to accomplish it. I need to get to this dignity thing and talk to this um, funeral director, and I got to download 200 videos and pictures, and I don't know how to do it. I don't know how I'm going to accomplish that. So I have to figure out, and I got just just days to get it done. Today I got to go to the to the to, to the. I have to be at on Bissonnette, which is about 20 minutes away from here. I got to be at the at the um, at the beauty salon so they can do something to my hair at 2:45. And then when I come home, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I gotta help Mr. Roy barbecue. So my hair do, my hair gonna smell like straight up barbecue. Baby, I can help you wrap it. No, it's not. Okay. Well, let's see. We'll see how much you say you wanna do something and actually do it. Yeah. No, cause many of us say we're gonna do something and we may not always accomplish it. So thank you, Bug. I hope that you don't forget and are, and are still here. If you to come be able down to. here so I can wrap your hand before you go down there and help you. Just, yeah. And I'm then going down there. whenever we get done barbecuing, guess what? I got to figure out where all the barbecue is going to go. Thank God for three fr refrigerators. Uh, so we can be able to put things in the refrigerators. Mm -hmm. and, and then my time isn't over. I got to get with the funeral director to see if he's going to allow me to. I'm going somewhere with all of this. These are the giants in my life. These are all the giants and obstacles that I have to conquer. But if David, with the word and the power of God, conquered his giant, then surely, surely, all of us can conquer whatever giant we have ahead of us. Here's another thing. Why is everybody holding me responsible to get to my son's funeral and wake service? Why can't people get on the Uber or on the Lyft to get there? Why is everybody looking at me? Yet, when I need something, people's heart is far away from me. They don't call me. They don't check on me. But when it's time to get somewhere, hey, mama, how are we going to get to the service? How are we going to get to this? So... Another giant that's the thorn on my side, like the Apostle Paul said, is people. Why am I responsible to get you to go to where you say you love so-and-so? I mean, people say they love my child. And I'm not talking about the children that can't drive. I'm talking about all these adults that can have their own way to get somewhere and they refuse to. I'm not The only people that I'm supposed to look out for... Is the people that's right here in my vicinity that live right here. But why do I have to be responsible to pick up Willie and Baba and Fufu and Juju somewhere else in another area? I mean, they get to where they want to go to and they take a lift anywhere else. They ride the metro anywhere they need to go to. Why is it that they holding me responsible? So these are all of the giants. And David had one giant that he had to encounter. And this giant was a nine foot six inch individual that was a huge big warrior that looked at David and said, what is this that you bring a little dog my way? 
Oh. Let's go to the word and read it. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. All right. The Philistines assembled their armies for war. They assembled at Saka, which is in Judah, and camped between Saka and Azekah at the Ephes Damien. So Saul and the army of Israel assembled and camped in the Elah Valley. They formed a battle line to fight the Philistines. The Philistines were stationed on a hill on one side and the Israelites were stationed on the hill on the other side. There was a ravine between the two of them. The Philistines army's champion came out of their camp. His name was Goliath from Gath. He was 10 feet tall. I thought he was 9 foot 6 inches. But here it says he's 10 feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head. And he wore a bronze coat of armor. Scales weighing 125 pounds. So if his armor was 125 pounds. Imagine how strong and big he was. On his legs he had bronze sheen guards. And on his back a bronze javelin. A javelin is a huge sword. The shaft of his spear was like the beam used by uh, weavers. The head of his spear was made of 15 pounds of iron. That's just the head of the spear, of this javelin, which was the top of it. The man who carried his shield walked ahead of him. Goliath stood and called to the Israelites, Why do you form a battle line? Am I not a Philistine? And aren't you Saul's servants? Choose a man and let him come down to fight me. So Goliath at this moment says, Why you got a whole heap of people to come and fight me? Oh, you guys know what it looks like to get jumped or to jump somebody. When we're in school, we do a lot of stupid things. So the first thing we say, Oh, let's jump her. Let's take her and put her in that bathroom and jump her. That's what they're doing now. And one idiot is right there filming the whole show just to put it on public feed. So now Goliath comes and says, Why do you got a whole army of people? Choose one man. Why? I used to fight in school. And there was a statement that we'd always say. The bigger you are. So height and weight. Bigness doesn't always work for your benefit. Because David was a small stature man like me. But see you got to know how to fight. This fight of faith. It's not like fighting in the streets anymore. This type of battle is different. I remember I was talking with my daughter-in-law, Lord Jesus. And she said to me, well, Mama, I don't know what we got to do. We're going to have to get with these women. Because I need my baby daddy's children. I said, well, baby. Daddy, what you going to do? You're going to humble yourself and maybe apologize for absolutely nothing. Because especially yeah. if you know you didn't do anything. And that is how you fight the giant so that you can win. Because you got to ask yourself, what's more important? The giant that's in front of me or my God that will vindicate me? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the winner. Folks say, what's understood doesn't have to be spoken. It's already there. So what is the giant that you're facing? And see, you can't fight that fight with your own words and your own strength. So we're going to find out 
as we keep going. Let's go on to verse 8. Goliath stood and called the Israelites. Why do you form a battle line? Am I not a Philistine and aren't you Saul's servant? Choose a man and let him come down to fight me. If he can fight and kill me, then we will be your slaves. But if I overpower him and kill him, then you all will be our slaves. And serve us. Verse 10. The Philistine added, I challenge the Israelite battle line today. Send out a man. So when Saul and all the Israelites heard what the Philistines said, they were gripped with fear. So anytime you have a giant, if you don't learn to fight him with the word of God, you're gonna you're you know what? Even if you think you can get out there to fight out there in the streets out there in the world you will not win like when you let God vindicate you and the only way to win is by prayer and speaking what God has to say about the situation so as you read on down take some time everyone on today on your spare time and read what goes down but I want to read Oh, Let me go down to verse 20. 31. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, who then sent for him. David told Saul, No one should be discouraged because of this. I will go and fight the Philistine. So, whatever giant that you are faced with, the first thing you got to do is pray to your God and speak His word, not yours. Read what the Bible says about your situation. You got a situation? Lord, I'm getting bullied at school. This is unacceptable. You said if you're with me, then who and what can be against me? I send my angel of the Lord to go in front of me to help me fight this battle. So that I will win. See, we have a situation. Oh my God, I thank God for situations. Uh, camera lady, I'm still not in the center. So, here is the situation that we have. Someone thought, I know what I'll do. I'll just be the big bear wolf. And call, it, call the police and tell the police on people. And the big bad wolf was knocked down by God because he thought that others were going to go to jail. And that wolf ended up going to jail. So this is why you can't fight battles on your own. You cannot speak over your own life with your own words. But you got to let the Lord vindicate you. Is that the hardest thing? Absolutely it is. It destroys your flesh. It kills your pride. But mama, I didn't do nothing. Why do I have to apologize? But mama, I wasn't in the wrong. I didn't do nothing with that remote control. They took it. She did it. He did it. They grabbed it. She might have grabbed it. She might have took it to her apartment. But mama, I didn't do that. But mama, I didn't mess that up. But mama, I already cleaned up. And then... You got problems on top of problems. Instead of picking up that phone and saying, Lord, I need your help. Amen. Mother, you said that when I encounter an issue, I know you got a million and one things to do, Mama. But there's an issue here. And whatever we can't find, we would have located it before this day. So that's just one example. But anything else that comes over your life, you can't go with your own words and with your own strength and your own power. And the Bible says we are fit, filthy rags in the eyes of God. We have to go with the power that Jesus Christ gave to us. What is that power? 
It's called the Holy Spirit. Yes. And you cannot obtain that unless you are reading. Because David was a God-fearing young man. And he read his word. So while he was out there tending to his father's sheep, verse 35 said, I went after it. Watch what he said. David replied to Saul, I am a shepherd of for my father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear come, came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. Struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. So David wasn't saying, well, let me see. Well, you know, I think what I have to do is just move some stuff around. I think what I have to do is just, I got to, you know, these all these kids, they just can't come over. You know, I think what I have to do, but pray and talk to your God and he'll give you wisdom. Yes. Mother, there's too many people in this house. There's too much going on. We can't keep an eye on everything. Can you put that right there in your purse? Because Mother Charles got every key I have. So in case I have any trouble, all I got to do is pick up that phone and say, Hey, Mother, you know I had given you? Baby, I got it right down here for you, sweetie. You got to get somebody responsible. You got to have some wisdom. And you got to make sure that you pray. But when you don't pray, you cannot be led by God. When you go about doing your own thing, you will not achieve what it is that was left for you to achieve. All right? You want to have all of these kids with you? Guess what? Hey, listen to me. I just want to kill the beast. You want me to apologize to you? Please forgive me. I want to let this go because I know I'm responsible. Thank you. What do they need? Oh, you can get the babies next week. Child, you can go. Yeah. They'll be at. They'll be at their grandma house. Who's to say that I can't do what I want? They're my grandkids. So if I want them to go spend the night anywhere, because I'm responsible for them. See, that's another thing that you guys have to learn. If I'm responsible for your children, then don't do anything that will cause that to be taken away from you. Communicate with me. Talk to me, because Saul, when he called David, David didn't go and go make any excuses. The Bible says that David went and straight to Saul, the king of this country, and said, look, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of no one. When that, when that lion or that bear had that sheep, I took it right off the mouth. Now, who, who, who wants to go to the mouth of a lion or a, or a bear? They got big mouths. They got big old teeth. Everybody is not does not have that strength. But guess why David had it? Because he prayed every day. Because he heard the Spirit of God every day. Because he read his Bible. So he knew that whatever giant was in front of him, then look what else David says here. On verse 35, I took it out the mouth. If it attacked me, I took hold of its mane. You know what a mane is? The hair of the animal. So he grabbed the hair of the... How many of you guys been in a fight? And, oh, she got that long, pretty hair. Oh, she got that weave that I can wrap my hands around. So with one hand, I can grab that. And with the other hand, I can pop, pop. I mean, you know about fighting. So we know that there is a, there is levels to it. You have to have a strategy. So guess what? In your own personal prayer time, in your own time with God, he'll give you a strategy to fight over every devil. Because David didn't just go out there and say, well, let me see here. Let me assess the situation. Um, that's a big old lion right there. What can I? No, with God's power, David went and grabbed the mane, the hair of that lion. Look what it says. And he struck it and killed it. So you don't fight the battle of God to ask the devil to step off. 
but you fight the battle with demanding through the word of God. Lord, you said, Father, it is written. I mean, you got an example. Every time that devil came to Jesus, Jesus said, devil, it is written. The word of God has already been written. God has already spoke. And you know what the devil did? He had to leave. He had to step off and flee away from Jesus. And if Jesus brought that example to you, Lord, let me tell you something. I'm up against this battle. I know I haven't been doing perfect. I know I haven't been doing right. I've been robbing you for years, Father. I don't know how to give my tithes. I don't know how to be. Uh, I, I'm afraid that if I give you from the top what belongs to you, that I won't have nothing. But Lord, you told me in Malachi chapter 3, starting at verse 8, that if I just take the time and not rob you and bring the tenth into the storehouse and pay my tithes, you told me I could put you to the test. Mother was in need. I said, Father, I don't know how you're going to do it, and I don't care how you're going to do it. It was times that I cried because I said, okay, Lord, I'm in need of this amount of money, Father. I need you. Okay, Lord, I'm in need of this amount of money. I need you. And at the very end of my time with needing money, in the last 30 minutes, hear me good, children. God flooded my cash app, my zeal, to be able to complete all of this money from strangers, from people I didn't even know, from millionaires. Why? Because I've been declaring it for years. Millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires. Let us be your tax write-off. Many people that sold to help me out with my son's funeral, all they're asking for is an obituary. And they sent checks to me. God is too much. Let's keep going. Then watch what else David does. I have killed lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Do you all see? You have to tell that giant in your life as David killed that uncircumcised Philistine with the word of God, I now destroy and kill that devil inside of that child that's supposed to be a prophetess of many nations. I destroy every demon that's inside of my life because I'm supposed to live a better life. I destroy every demon and demonic spirit inside of them because God, you will vindicate me yes. and I'm going to have all the children in my house. We're going to all be there in my house. We're going to be watching TV. We're going to get up and fix breakfast. We're going to invite mama over here. She going to come here and regulate, make us clean up, but we're going to do it together. Whatever we do, we must do it together because the devil comes to separate. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy every relationship, every great thing, every great endeavor. And the biggest thing is the way that he destroys a lot of children is by disobeying their parents. There are so many kids that have lost their life and even the parents don't understand why they're gone. But it is due to the disrespect and the disobedience that has been caused because the Bible says that your days will be shortened. So every time you even call mama or daddy a bad name right here, Jesus Christ said, you already done it. When you think it. So that thought, get it out your head. Get that thought out of your mind. Lord, I don't know why mama is acting up, why she doing this, but I'm just going to stay out of her way. I'm going to do what she told me to do. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to shut to the up. And then, Lord, you speak to her. Lord, you bring revelation to her. And guess what? When you serve the Lord, the Lord will speak to every single parent. When you serve God, even the parents that don't go to church, they even have to submit. 
the Bible says that even your enemies will be at peace with you. Yes, yes, yes. So every devil has to surrender. Yes, man. I mean, David did it to this uncircumcised Philistine. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to be just like one of them. Watch what he said. Because he has challenged the army of the living God. So David didn't even look at those men like they were men. But he looked at God that loved the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He loved, those were his chosen people. So just like he chose them, he chose us. He said, I give it to the Jew as well as the Gentile. So we are the Gentile group. And if God can love them and we can serve the living God and we can go before him in prayer, in supplication, don't you dare think that you don't have a living God that will defend you in every situation. Amen. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Yes. Now, there's rules to this. You must have his power, not yours. You must keep quiet. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 19, be slow to speak, be quick to listen, and be slow to get angry. Because we know that human righteousness does not produce, I mean, because human anger doesn't produce the righteousness that God requires. God requires you to be quiet sometimes. God requires you to be able to stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to let this thing defeat me. But Lord, you told me, I got to shut to them up. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to put a muzzle in my mouth. And I'm going to speak my word. I'm going to pray. Because Jesus said, close your door. He said, go into your secret place. We have secret place in the shower. We have secret place in our cars. We got a secret place in a cubicle when we're at work. We got a secret place in the lunchroom in the corner somewhere. You got a, your secret place is wherever you know that God will meet you. But mother, I've never had a secret place. Create one like this. You know I have a secret place everywhere I go. I wouldn't have created me a secret place in that Airbnb. Oh, this is my spot. He said, no mother, you got to go to the other side. Okay, I went right to the other side, yes. and I made that my secret place. Mm -hmm. So that whenever it was my time to spend with God, I knew exactly where to meet him. Amen. And see, this is what happened to David. David, now watch, let's keep going and see what he says. In verse 35, 36, I have killed the lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Because he has challenged the army of the living God. David added, the Lord who saved me from the lion and the bear will save me from the Philistine. Yes. Go, Saul told David, and may the Lord be with you. So Saul put this battle tunic on David. He put this bronze helmet on David's head and dressed him in the armor. David fastened Saul's sword over his clothes and tried to walk, but had never practiced doing this. I can't walk with these things, David told Saul. I never had any practice doing this. So David took all those things off. He, stick, he took a, his stick with him, which is what he practiced. He picked out five smooth stones from the riverbed and put them in his shepherd's bag. With a sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. You know what this teaches us? What's good for one may not be good for another. So you have to let that you have to learn from this situation that the prayer that works for one individual, God may be telling you something different to you. And you have to understand that. See, the way that mother prays is not the way I pray. But if we all learn to pray with the word of God, it doesn't matter whose mouth it comes from. The power is in his word. We're not supposed to be having 
Lord, bless my mama, bless my daddy, bless my kids. Give me a good day. That's not in the word. But the word does say, Father, help me to honor my parents. Because you told me, Lord, that in Ephesians chapter 6, that it will go well with me. So, Father, help me and teach me how to have honor for all those that are older than me. Take it even further to those that are helping me, those that are taking care of me and my children, those of us that are my family members that may not be blood related to me, but they're related to me in the spirit. Help me to honor them. Lord, I have this obstacle in front of me. Lord, you told me in Ephesians and Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Yeah. Lord, strengthen me. These, but This is the way that you pray. Yeah. Stop letting these church folks teach you how to pray with this humming, 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 and they don't even know what they're praying. And then the moment that they pray for you, they have absolutely no power because you get up off the floor after you, and you get right back up, and you're still the same way. You're still doing the same things. Don't let the devil win on this. But learn the word of God so that you can use his words to conquer over things that's in your life. Hallelujah. So now, here's this shenanigan man kind of sort of like the shenanigan people. You know those people that's the so-called naysayers like the church folks say? You know those people that are always saying one thing but really mean something else. Those people that are always, girl, girl, I'm so sorry for what happened to you. Girl, you know, I'm here for you, girl. But when you're like, okay, I need some help, I need some help moving. I need some help. You're like, what if nobody's answering? The Bible says that love is an action word. And you must show forth action to love somebody else. <coughs> okay, let's keep going. So after he grabbed all his stuff and he went and he approached the giant, and verse 41 says, The Philistine proceeded by the man carrying his shield was coming closer and closer to David. When the Philistine got a good look at David, he despised him. So to despise somebody is to... I know you did come up before me. But who are you? Yeah. What? You little roach. <laughs> You little ant, you little grasshopper, you little fly. This is what people will say about you. This is how people will treat you in the world that do not understand the huge big God that you serve. Amen. Uh, Jay Lee, can you put this on Wi-Fi because it's on, on 5G, baby, so you have to put it on Wi-Fi because it's buffering. That's not good. So watch what he did. The Philistine proceeded uh, with the man carrying it's his shield. The was coming closer and closer. When the Philistine got a good look at David, he despised him. After all, David was a young man with a healthy complexion and good looks. Baby, I need you to put that on Wi-Fi. Okay, because it's connected to a thing from the Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, baby. So look what it says. Verse 43. The Philistine asked David, Am I a dog that you come to attack me with sticks? So he made fun of David. Because David had them smooth rocks. And he had that slingshot. People may make fun of you. Because you got a baseball glove. And you got a baseball every day. People may make fun of you. Because you do your own hair. And they have no idea that you're going somewhere in life. People may make fun of you because you got to pee in a tablet every day. People may make fun of you because you're by yourself reading your word all through the day. People may make fun of you for the things that they don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. But it's not for people to understand. Because... You see what he said? Watch what he said. So the so-called 
the Philistine called on his gods to curse David. You know whatever gods with a little g that's against you? Even you sometimes. You sometimes are against your own selves by criticizing yourself, talking down on yourself, saying that you'll never stop doing what you're doing that's not conducive to your spiritual growth. Saying to yourself, I can't achieve this on my own. I can't move out and be by myself. I can't do this. And the spirit of fear is the first thing you got to say. You said, Father, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, that the spirit of fear is not for me, but that you gave me a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a disciplined, sound, and focused mind. Yeah. Yeah. You got to speak God's word over yourself, especially when you're depressed. Oh, God. I've had such a state of depression during these times that I would just, oh, Lord, help me. All right, Father. I'm crying out to you. I need some strength. Strengthen me when I get ready to do this. Strengthen me as I get ready to go walk this. We're on, we're cutting it down to the nitty gritty. We got just a few days to do one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my life. Parents don't wake up to say, well, I guess it's time for me to bury my child. No, parents don't wake up to that. No parent wakes up, no matter how angry they are with their child, no matter how disobedient and disrespectful, you don't wake up with those thoughts of saying, well, let's see here. How am I going to go in and look at my son and watch him in that coffin? and still be able to pronounce the word of God and watch. And I need encouragement, but I'll be there to encourage others. That's why I have to hang on to the word of God because God said, girl, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So when you are encouraging others, you will also be encouraged by me. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to do what? you need me to do for you. I'm going to strengthen you and uphold you with my powerful righteous hand. Yes, yes. That's what David told us in the book of Psalms. Yes. So now, <clears throat> he said, come on. The Philistine told David, I'll give your body to the birds. So this is what this huge giant told David. And David told the Philistine, you come to me with swords and spears and javelin, mm -hmm. but I come to you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the army of Israel, whom you insulted. Mm -hmm. So in your prayer time, you command the atmosphere and tell God, they insulted me. They are up against me without no just cause. Father, yes. you said that you would vindicate me. I pray that prayer every single day because I need vindication for what they've done to my son. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. My son, I was not supposed to get a call saying that my son did not receive medical attention and I'm supposed to be okay with that. No, I come up yeah. against every warden, every single uh, deputy, a uh, captain, sergeant, those are the devils that I'm fighting every day. Because they're going to give me answers. I don't care nothing about what you tell me that I will never find out. The devil is a lie from, and I bind him up in the pits of hell because God is going to give me peace. I'm going to know exactly. I'm going to know exactly what happened to my boy. I'm going to get vindication, and every last one of his children will be well compensated for what they've done to their father. Yes. Now, let's keep going. It says today, verse 46, today the Lord will hand you over to me. I will strike you down and cut off your head. And this day I will give you, give the dead bodies of the Philistine armies to the birds and the wild animals. So you see what he did? 
He took his word and put it right back on him. Because the Philistines said, you, you little maggot, uh, you, you little ant, I will feed you to the birds. But David came and said, I'm not coming against you with this slingshot and these smooth rocks. I'm coming against you with the army. Who is the army of the Lord? The angels are. Yes. And the Bible said that each one of you have an angel assigned. Yes. Do you know what many of your angels are doing? Well, Jay, you send me anywhere you need something? <laughs> Pastor, wait, Muffin, Mother, Maya, where, I'm your angel. I need, I need you to, you got to send me somewhere. And this is what your angel is doing. Pacing back and forth. Because you never sent your angel nowhere. And if you don't read the word of God, you won't even know that there is an angel assigned to you yes. that will come and rescue you from every situation. Amen. When I went to the state's capital, went to speak for on behalf of Jalen, that was a very trying time for me. Because there was a lot of people saying a lot of negative things. And all these people that were making excuses of what happened to my son. And nobody said, hey, I'm responsible. It's me. We were supposed to treat him better. We were supposed to do right by him. So as his mother, I stand up for him. I haven't even buried him. But God sent me to the state's capital yes. so that I can go and speak on his behalf. Yes. And I had to leave out of the courtroom because so I wanted to punch one of them for what they did to my baby. And as I left out of the room, God vindicated me in that situation. And here comes the devil. We were getting ready to start the truck. The truck was couldn't put it on reverse, barely could go on drive. We putt putt it all the way to where we can make it by the Denny's. The alternator went out on the van. I went in, I said, Father, you can't put this on me. This is too much for me. I need you to take the wheel and handle this situation for me. Lord, you said that you will never leave me nor forsake me. And I thank God for Mr. Roy being there with me. Because at that moment, he encouraged me. When I was ready to give up, oh, don't you think that because you're with God that you won't have no trouble? Talk about it. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. But you know that wonderful song that says trouble don't last always? Mm -hmm. That is a very true statement. So as I was sitting there, I was just like, I need you, Lord. I can't be stranded out here. I got to go home. I got stuff I got to do for my baby. I got to I gotta finish doing the task that's at hand. And I went in the ditties. I ordered me a milkshake. I sat right there. Mm -hmm. I sure did. Good for you. When trouble comes, you better comfort yourself. Yes. Yes. The Bible says that David, everybody was up against David when he became a king. And all the men wanted to kill him. And David went and he encouraged himself. So as he encouraged himself, I encouraged me. When Mr. Roy encouraged me, I went right in and he said, I, 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 need, I, I need something to make you happy. I said, oh, I know what. I sat right there at the bar and say, give me a milkshake. Amen. I had my milkshake. I was drinking my milkshake and here come some wonderful people to come start encouraging me, telling me all kind of things. I met a beautiful woman who also lost her son. And the deputies beat her son to death. And nobody even told her that they did anything. And she didn't find out until she, the Ben Tom called her and told her that her son was fighting for his life. So now, as she comes to me, the woman didn't leave my side. Those two ladies stayed with me the entire time. And so then we have to, we have to put our heads together because I'm, as I'm sitting there, I said, Lord, I need you to work. I'm going to have my milkshake and I'm putting you to work. I yes. said, my angel. I said, angel of King's Land, 
go find the people that's going to help me. Fabian said, Mama, don't pay that much money because I was going to go pay a shop. He said, no, don't do that. Let me pull up some places. He pulled up mobile mechanics. Mm -hmm. Then we went to, the lady was so sweet, she took me to the autos when I bought the part. And she said, is there any mobile mechanics over here? Did anybody, do y'all know of a mechanic? She said, oh, we got one, hold on. She took the card and passed it to me. The man was there in less than 30 minutes. And him and his son, his employee, whoever that young man was with him, they fixed the van. Uh -huh. Now we didn't get home till almost one in the morning. But guess what God did? He stopped us from traveling in the rain. Yes. He stopped hurricanes. He stopped a wreck. He stopped something. And so you have to learn the patience of God when he don't want you to move. Mm -hmm. He didn't want us to move. And the devil was mad. You oh, know why? Because when I was sitting there privately with this man, he said, well, I'm going to tell you like this, Miss Light. You may never find out what happened to your baby. I said, well, what about if I do? Well, you'll never find out this and find out that. I said, but what if I do? And every negative thing he said to me, I said, but what if I am? But what if I do? I said, I'm a woman of faith, and I'm working my faith. Because I'm here in the state's capital, where other mothers would be somewhere back then and say, I can't go this time, because it's too close for me to bury my son. And the Holy Spirit said, go. And I went. And through that meeting, not only did I meet such a powerful, wonderful group, man, shout out to the Texas Jail Project. Because these wonderful people blessed me beyond measure. This was the strangers that were my ram in the bush at that moment that I needed them to be. So now here comes God to rescue me because I spoke his word. And so God now rescues the Philistines through this young man, David. That's why every demon that is against you, every giant that is coming up against you, you must be like David. And after he said, I'll feed you to the animals, David said, the whole world will know that Israel has a God. Then everyone gathered here will know that the Lord can save without a sword or a spear. Because the Lord determines every battle's outcome, He will hand all of you over to us. Yes. So in every situation, you got to put God's word on it. And when you put His word on it, and you put that in Jesus' name, that's your stamp of approval right there. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Send your angel out to do whatever. Do everything that you need to do so that your angel can work for you. And you will fight every giant that's over your life. Yes. You will purpose it in your own heart and determine to win. The Bible says victory is short. Every time this man was coming up against me saying blah, blah. Here's what I was hearing. Wah, 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 wah. Like the Charlie Brown teacher. I just looked at him like, I said, well, sir, I'm a woman of faith. I'm a woman of prayer, and I'm not, and this is no disrespect, I'm not like everybody else. It's true. I got a God that works for me. It's the truth. I got a God that works for me. And my God shall supply all of my needs according to this riches and glory. So every time he told me no, and even my son, well, mama, I just want to tell you, you got to see the realistic of this thing. Ah! You shut up too. I'm not trying to hear. Why? Because when you don't know God, when you don't have the faith and the hope, because I said, hold up, you can't tell me. I got to keep hope alive. Nobody has ever found out but Jalen will be found out. There has never been an act, but there will be a Jalen act. There will never, no more parents are going to have to, 
that jail in the south is going to crumble in bits and pieces. Somebody's going to be bulldozed in that place. All I'm going to do is get there right after the funeral. That's all I need to do. Because the Bible has shown me everywhere my feet go. Everywhere I put my feet tread, tread all I got to do is speak God's word. Speak the word. And may I add that as your mystery of what happened to your son comes forth, so shall the others. Amen. Amen, mother. Amen. So that they will see. Oh, because I'm David. Huh. I'm the little small David. And nobody that is going to come up against me. They can't because I'm not fighting on my own. I got the army of the angels fighting with me so that I can know everything that's happening. And then they'll be starting to scare us. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like people. Oh, well, we let's go have a Let's find that out. Let's go see what this is. Yes. It's going to work like that. Yes. Yes. And yes. Blow up. Yes. And yes. And yes. And yes. So we're going to end right here. And we're going to pick up on part two of the uh, Giants on next Sunday. So that, and then on next week, we're going to talk about some of your Giants. It's, yeah, it blew off and I put it in the back on the top of the green trash can. Okay, we'll go ahead and put it back on there. And put some bricks on top of it, Christy. Those bricks are on the side. So, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me say a prayer for everyone. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for this mighty word. Lord, we thank you, Father, that you say in your powerful word that when two or more are gathered in your name, you are in the midst, Lord. And whatever we ask you, Father, you will. You are anointed. We anoint every single word that's in your Bible, Lord. For you said that the word of God is in our mouth and it's in our hearts. So Lord, help us to read your word every day. Help us to pray and understand the importance of why we are to pray. Why we are to read God's word. Why we are to pay attention. Why we are to focus. Why we are to live a disciplined and structured life, Lord. Father, you said in your precious word that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we will condemn them. So, Lord, I speak a word over everyone in this house that they will get a word from the Bible and that whatever giant that they are faced with, that the word of God will be their vengeance. The word of God will vindicate them in every situation as he does everybody else, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you said we're the sheep of your pasture. Lord God, I thank you, Father God, when you said that all things are working together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. I thank you, Lord, for this great manifested word that will encourage each and every one of us to go out and fight the good fight of faith with prayer and with the word of God, knowing and trusting that you got it all figured out for us, Father. This prayer I give to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Amen. 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 Love you all. Peace and blessings. It's okay.